Hi there, welcome to Nepi Invest. I'm going to do another weekly wrap up video, look at some interesting announcements during the week. And there were quite a few. I've got them listed out here, the ones I want to talk about, and maybe about 15, starting with a company that released a very interesting announcement today. And the reason I, I find it very interesting is because I own it in my portfolio. So whenever a company I own in my portfolio releases an interesting announcement, I more than likely am going to talk about it. In fact, they also had a Zoom chat. And I actually attended the Zoom chat because I just wanted to hear a little bit more about this announcement. So that's the first company I'll talk about. And then I'll go in uh, order of when they release the announcement, starting with a company called Next ED or Next Ed, which used to be called iCollege. And then we'll finish with another company with a ticker of 1CG, which I have no idea what they do. Anyway, before we talk about individual companies and interesting announcements they have released during the week, let's have a look at, to see what's happened in the XGO this week. And the reason I want to start here is because it was a really good week. In fact, last four trading days were in the green. So four up days in the row, which means overall the XGAO was up about 3.7%. Closed at around about 7,303. Uh, trading view says 7,306.8, but I am recording this video at 4.25 p.m. And trading view is 20 minutes delayed, which means... TradingView right, is right now in the middle of the closing auction. If we go to Comsec, this is up to date. And the XJO closed at 7,303. And if we have a look at the weekly chart for the XJO, it's just going sideways right now. But this was a really good week. One of the best weeks we have seen for a while. Um, and I think probably the most recent good week would have been in November last year, where we saw the XJO up 3.85% in one week. So these type of weeks actually don't happen all that often. And typically they happen uh, at the bottom of the a downward cycle. You can see that we had some really good up weeks after COVID-19 financial panic. We had some really good up weeks after that double bottom uh, in last year. And we just had this really good week now. So maybe this is the start of some good times on the XJO. I do think the market might be... Not really pricing in any potential recession right now. And if it does start pricing it in, it's going to be based off some pretty bad news from companies. And maybe that bad news will be in reporting month, which we're going to have in August. But no signs of that just yet. Or oh, some companies are showing signs of that, but not all. Anyway, so interesting times on the SGA. Let's have a look at the daily chart. This is the weekly chart. So yeah, really four really good days. So XJO went up 1.5% on Tuesday. 0.4%, 1.6%, and a further 0.8%. So four really good days. But as you can see, back in June, we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven really good days, and then it plunged with three big down days. And that's what we typically see is the down days tend to be worse than the up days. Uh, so I would not be surprised to see next week to be down on the XJO. I might talk about a little bit more about the XJO in my technical update video, although I might not do that this week. I might do something else. Anyway, first company I want to talk about is Nuran Pharmaceuticals. And as soon as I saw the announcement, I ran, yeah, this is going to be good. Up 16.75%. I actually did put a bid in at $13. The lower got was $13.14. So I missed my bid by about 14 cents, but it's okay. I am a shareholder of this company. I've been a shareholder of this company for two years now. We look at the chart for New Ren. For those who don't know, when I took a position, uh, some people might think I'm crazy. Well, at the time, some would have thought me crazy. I took a position on this day here back in December 2021. After the share price rose 100% in one day, I then took a position because the news, the reason why the share price ran up that day was enough for me to take a long-term position. So I took a position at $3.20 the next day. And the share price is now $13.66. Now, I have not kept all my holdings. I have um, taken some profits just to lower my risk in this company because I would not consider this company to be a low-risk company right now, but the risk is getting lower and lower as we move. Now, even though the share price was up 17, what was it, 16.8% today, share price is still not an all-time high. We have seen a share price higher than this, back in May. So the share price was in the downtrend for a little bit of time. 
And the reason why the share price was struggling to get above this level today was just supply of shares on the market. So shareholders are bought in this zone between about, we'll say between about $13.50 and $15. Had the opportunity to sell out now because remember, this is very important. The majority of investors, when they buy into a company, uh, in, immediately think or believe the share price of that company should go up. If the share price goes down, like all these investors in Nurand New Pharmaceuticals bought back in May, as soon as they see the share price go down, they consider that company to be a dog stock because the share price has gone down. And when they see share price rally back up to where they bought, they sell. That is supply. And that's why it's resistance. You see it all the time. And for those who have not heard, I've told this story maybe five times on this channel before. I've heard colleagues at work say this exact thing. They have said to me, I bought into this company, it's gone down. And as soon as the share price gets that back up to where I bought in, I'm going to sell. I don't understand that philosophy. If share price goes back up to when you're bored, it's in an uptrend. There's no reason to sell. Anyway, so a nice breakout in the share price of New Rand Pharmaceuticals, I've always got to make sure I pronounce this company's name right, is if it gets above $15. So it did struggle there today, but, um, and I haven't even talked about the announcement yet. So let's have a look at the announcement. Silly me, should talk about the announcement first. And then anyway, okay, so the, and should I zoom in a little bit? Let's zoom in a little bit. So the announcement was Niren and Arcadia expand global partnership for Trifontide. A couple of the interesting things, I haven't looked at the presentation. Actually, let's have a look at the presentation because it's probably uh, a little bit more info, maybe not a little bit more information, but this is a really good announcement for Neuron. That's why the share price increased. And initially, uh, in the next 10 days, they're going to receive 100 million US dollars from Arcadia. Yes, 100 million US dollars from Acadia. And there's all, the, all these other points. In fact, Neuron Pharmaceuticals is going to have $226 million uh, in Australian dollars um, in the next few weeks because of this. Uh, and they're going to receive the $100 million up front. Uh, so this is worldwide. So initially, their agreement with Acadia was just a sale debut uh, in USA. Now it's worldwide. So they're going to receive this $100 million upfront payment, $35 million first commercial sale in Europe, $15 million in Japan. Uh, so a lot of money yet to come into the coffers for New Rand Pharmaceuticals. And also the royalties here, a lot of royalties. So between 10 to 15% increasing sort of a T royalty rate. And for the rest, rest of the world, <coughs> those royalties were, they said, so say some here, mid-teens to low 20% royalties. So, and we already know because Acadia have said this, how much they are receiving in in sales uh, of Debu, which has only been in product, not production, in commercialization, whatever you want to call it, for maybe four months or so. I think they might have mentioned in this somewhere. They may not have mentioned in this one, but in the other announcement, the main announcement, uh, they mentioned that the sales for a for a debut, 21 to 23 million in the second quarter of 2023 and 45 to 55 million in the third quarter. Of course, the quarters in the United States are a little bit different than our quarters. And apparently Acadia also had a shareholder briefing today just to mention how these sales are going. And don't forget that 45 to 55 million in sales in the third quarter uh, uh, new Rand Pharmaceuticals will receive at least 10% of that. So we're talking about $5 million just in uh, royalties. Uh, so I might do a standalone video on this announcement uh, tomorrow. Uh, that remains to be seen because I want to talk a little bit more about it, but I should move on. So good announcement from New Rand Pharmaceuticals. Now onto the first announcement back in Monday, and that's a company called Next ED Group, Next Ed Group. A company that I do know as I College, they changed their name, Mark, have about $200 million. They released some financial guidance for the year, financial year 23 guidance. And to be honest with you, I don't follow this company all too much. Uh, it did look a little bit disappointing, and uh, particularly when, uh, what was it? Record revenues. It was record revenues, but... Uh, there must have been some disappointment in here for shareholders or the market. 
found something it didn't like because the market sold off. Now, because I don't follow this company too closely, initially when I looked at it, I didn't see anything not to like, but the share price dived 14.5% on the day. So obviously the market was disappointed by these results. Uh, I'm not that interested in these service like education type companies, but this is the daily chart. In fact, if you look at the one hourly chart, which is I'm starting to do more and more now. Uh, in fact, I'm doing a project on this. Uh, the share price just in the one hourly chart was in a downtrend and you can see a massive dong live. As soon as the company released this announcement, the share price dropped, uh, dropped 9.4% in that one hour and just kept on tumbling over the next few days. And if you look at the daily chart, Share price of Next ED or Next Ed was in a beautiful uptrend. Share price had increased from about 60 cents all the way to $1.81 over about a one year period, just over one year, or about a one year period. And that down, that uptrend in share price has come to an end. Uh, sentiment has shifted from positive to negative. In fact, the share price has dropped from about $1.85 to a current share price of $1.18.5. So just looking at a daily chart and the one hourly chart, uh, both are in downtrends and might, maybe you could argue a bit of a double bottom there. Uh, high volume as well, uh, which is not necessarily a good sign. That could be just a fund manager selling out of next, uh, nexted, nexed, nexed. We'll call it nexed. Next company I want to look at is a mining company, which I don't know much about. 53M Mining. This company released an announcement on Monday. Spectacular. Gold mineralization confirmed at Edgedina. Spectacular. I opened it up and went, well, I wonder what spectacular means for this company. In a one meter screen, fire assay results returned 10 meters at 241.2 gold, gold uh, per ton, um, or grams per ton for gold, or gold grams per ton. I don't know how to pronounce that. And in fact, they've said here, Bonanza grades identified from 27 to 28 meters, 2,303.53 grams per ton of gold in that little zone um so maybe that is spectacular so how did the market react so you might expect and i actually did expect the market to go wow wow share price actually dropped share price dropped 5.4 percent but you'll notice if you just look at this uh, trade history on the friday the previous trading day the share price of this company rose almost 20 percent loose lips mm, loose lips i think so and on the day they released this announcement, the share price actually reached a high of 23 cents and then it closed at 17.5. So those who bought in the previous Friday sold out more than likely. They were selling. So let's have a look at the chart for M3M. Look at the one, this is the one hourly chart. So you can see the buying. The buying really started the 5th of June. They must have released another announcement on the 5th of June. Let's have a look. On the 5th of June, yeah, that's more than one month ago. 5th of June, there was a trading halt. High-grade gold intersection from scout drilling at Edgedina. So share price rose 35% on this. That was the announcement. And then we did see a bit of a rally in the share price the previous day on the Friday. But just look at the chart. There was not much volume in that rally, 20%. And then... Too much excitement when initially they released this announcement. Share price actually went from uh, 23 cents all the way down to 15 cents. And that was a time to take a position if you wanted and liked that announcement from the company. Share price is still in an uptrend, still creeping higher. Uh, nice volume as well. If you look at the daily chart, it looks much better, actually. It looks pretty good. Uh, I would not call this uh, anything other than a new uptrend developing for M3 Mining market for this company. 8.4 million. Oh, gee, that's very low. So maybe for those who love gold and like speculation in this area, this could be the company for you. Now on to our favorite company I've done a few videos on, Loomis Diagnostics. What happened this week? So they did, um, they completed their placement and launches an SPP, investor presentations. Uh, so this whole week was about their capital raising Unfortunately for Loomis, uh, it was not a good week when I look at the chart. In fact, we look at the, the one hourly chart. So we had that initial excitement. Share price rose, what was it, 200% in one day. Share price went all the way to a high of about 18 cents. Current share price, 6.4 cents. But saying all that, 
the share price has found a bottom. It's consolidating between about 6.1 and 7 cents. So, and volume has decreased as well. If we start to see a little bit of a tick up in volume, if we see the share price get above 7 cents, that could be a time to take a position in this. It would only be a trading position if I did do that at all. So I might put Loomis just on my watch list just to see what happens in the next few trading days. When I say watch list, I'm talking about my trading watch list because I do think it's hit a bottom. Uh, yeah, it's, I think it's definitely hit a bottom just by looking at the one hourly. We can even look at the, say, a five minute. Yeah, it's definitely hit a bottom. I think it's, it's now... Um, consolidating around about 6.5 cents. Uh, so yeah, interesting little company. Uh, next one I want to look at is an IT consultancy company, which recently listed on the ASX. When I say recently, I'm talking about maybe over one year ago. In fact, if we look at two year announcements, we can tell, I can tell you exactly when this company listed, they listed at the end of 2022. So it hasn't been on the ASX for uh, one year yet. So this is an IT consultancy company. They released on Tuesday their preliminary or an audited financial year 23 results. Now, I know nothing about this company. So, so when I know nothing about this company, the first thing I do when I see an announcement is have a look at what they do, then have a look at the market cap. In trading view, there's no market cap on this company. Uh, have a look at the one hourly or the chart, that sort of thing. And the reason I want to look at the announcement, I can get up here somewhere. The reason I want to look at the announcement is sometimes they will have in the announcement what the company does. So there should be in the back section, not always. So SoCo is one of Australia's fastest growing IT consultancies. Now, straight away, I don't like services-based companies. And to me, IT consultancy is service-based. And the reason I don't like service-based companies is simply because of the lack of scale. Uh, if you increase the size of your customer base, you have to increase the size of staff to service that customer base. So there's no scale there or very little scale there. Uh, and that's why a lot of service-based companies can have really high revenue, uh, very low margins. Uh, and that's one of the reasons I'm not that interested. Now, I will okay, on occasion take a position in these type of companies. So let's have a look to see how SoCo has been doing. Uh, and I haven't don't even know the market cap of this company. Let's have a look at ComSec. They have a market cap of 34.7. That might be true. I just want to confirm it. Go to market index. They say 32.2, 126.3 million shares on issue. So let's have a look at these results. Financial year 23, revenue of 19.8. So that's fairly low. Uh, operating EBIT of 3.4. So they could be profitable. Statutory profit of 1.5. So profitable, 3.4% to have a prospectus forecast of 1.4. So this is a profitable company. Cash on hand of 6.4 million, 13% higher than prospectus forecast. Uh, expanding client base. So it seems like this company is performing. But again, I don't think the market's going to love this type of company. So let's have a look to see what the chart's doing. That's the one hourly chart. And because it hasn't been listed for too long, nothing much is on the chart right now. Share price is just going sideways, which is better than going down. Uh, but this company has been listed for now over six months. I can, based off my rules, I can take a position in this company if I wanted to. Uh, and did the market react nicely? So this was released on the, did the market react good to this announcement? So on the Tuesday, share price rose 3.8, then fell 7.3% yesterday. Again, not liquidly traded. You can see when they released this announcement on the Tuesday, that was the first time in the week a shares in this company have been trading. If we look at the summary, there's a big gap between the first buy and the first sell, three cent gap. Uh, and in fact, no trades today, zero trade today. So this is a liquidly traded company, but market cap of $35 million and profitable and growing. I'm going to put this company onto a company I might do a video on. So SOC, SoCo Corporation. Now onto a tow, what's it called? A Tomo Diagnostics. So this company experienced some really good, very short lived tailwinds because of Loomis Diagnostics. And just like Loomis Diagnostics, who did a cover raising, what do you think Atomo Diagnostics did after the share price rose a fair bit? So for those who don't know, share price of this company rose 63.6% on the 3rd of July, another 130.6% on the 4th of July. Share price went to a high of 10 cents, 
Then the company did a capital raising, exactly what the company management should do. So they did the capital raising, or they went into the halt on the Tuesday, announced the capital raising on the Thursday, the 13th. And unfortunately, share price did plunge 26.9%. And the share price has dropped all the way down to 3.6 cents. So I think the fun times for Tomo Diagnostics have come to an end. So let's look and compare a Tomo Diagnostics one hour chart to, so this is definitely more bearish than Loomis Diagnostics. You can see the share price ran up very quickly. Huge volume coming in. This is, remember, one hourly. So massive volume coming in over about a two or three day period here. Push the share price all the way up to 10 cents. Volume has absolutely collapsed as the share price has come down, which means the day traders are all out of this stock now. And share price just might gradually go down from here. So... I might do research on Loomis, but I'm not interested in Atomo Diagnostics right now. Now onto another company I do own, a long-term own, hold for me, and hold. That is Bell Financial Group. And as you can see by, the well, if you can't see it. So they, a release announcement, expects first half profit before tax of approximately 16.2 million, up 21%. Sounds pretty good. Uh, there was concerns about this company in regards to, it's only a one-page announcement. So all they said was $16.2 million profit, increase of 21%, exactly what the title says. The market liked it. And the most important thing about Bell Financial Group was this finalization of Austrac external audit on the 30th of June. So they were being audited in regards to uh, money laundering and Austrac said, oh, that's, well, we can't find anything. Um, Austrac has decided that it will no longer take any further regulatory action. And one of the reasons why the share price of this company absolutely plunged was because of the fears that they would have to pay a fair bit of money in regards to this um, thingy, whatever you call it. Um, and that's why the share price plunged back here. And the share price kept on dropping because of headwinds. And now a good announcement here. And I think the bottom has been reached for Bell Financial Group. A markup of this company, 324.6 million. Dividend yield, 6.9%. Price earnings ratio, 12.7%. I think it is fairly cheap. It was cheap whenever it was below $1. It has been below $1 for a fair bit of time. So is this a breakout in Bell Financial Group? Now, if we go all the way back to the start of 2022, whenever the share price gets around about the 150-day moving average, which is a solid blue line, we can see the share price struggling to stay at that level. See back in August last year, December, then again in January, we saw the share price try to get above in February, but fail. And then even in April, uh, the 150 day moving average acted as a resistance level. I think that has come to an end based on what we have seen over the last four trading days. Share price has increased above that and has kept on going. However, in saying that, a lot of resistance moving forward because a lot of shareholders have bought in uh, between about, we'll say a dollar fifteen, which is round about there, and a dollar, and that will be resistance. Uh, not not great volume coming in the last few days, but uh, this was a good announcement. If we look at the one hourly chart, which I'm starting to, this looks again way more bullish. In fact, what's happened after that initial really good announcement, we have seen the share price uh, go up. It's going to continue to rally, so not a lot of selling coming in. And when, when we say not a lot of selling, I mean the share price has not dropped because the selling has exceeded the demand. So there would be some selling here, but there's enough demand to meet that selling. And we have seen a couple of one hour periods where the share price has dropped a little bit on pretty big volume, but I think the selling has come to an end. And that's why share price did increase 3.4%. So I was thinking of adding to my position in the last few trading days. The only thing that held me back with Bell Financial Group was simply, I think there is a little bit of resistance. If I see the share price get above $1.12.5, which would beat, get above these two highs we saw back in February and December, that means there's only this little peak back in August last year. So if we're going to go above that level, I think there's much less resistance. If the share price can get above about $1.25, uh, I think the resistance will be much lower because the last time the share price would be that high or above that that level would be back when the share price was in this well-defined downtrend. Uh, and long way to go before it gets back up to the previous highs uh, back in 2022. Uh, late, early 2022, share price then was almost $2. So I think 
share price can double from here over the next few years. That's why I'm a shareholder of this company. So a long-term shareholder, I'm not trading this company. I am thinking some of the companies I own for the long-term, I might trade those companies, keep, um, keep a position in those companies a long trading position and then trade around it and possibly even even build up my uh, holdings in those companies just by trading. That's what I'm thinking right now. A company I was almost going to buy based off the announcement was a company called RPM Global. Uh, so they did an update on software sales and expected EBITDA. Uh, this was good because the share price did rally. Um, I do know a few people who love this company, who think this is a great company. So contracted value uh, from software sales increased by 14.3 million over the previous year to 70.5 million TCV uh, from, from subscription sales finished at 65.8 million, um, perpetual sales at 2.9 million. Uh, and do they say anything? Our annual recurring revenue is 55 million um, and operating EBITDA is now expected to finish here at 15 million. Of course, operating EBITDA, I'm not the biggest fan of that, but this is, in my opinion, maybe the most important point. The company had cash on hand and no debt of 34.7 million uh, as at 31st of June, 2023. And last year, this time, 34.5 million. Now this is after they spent 7.6 6 million during the year on the company's share buyback and 0 0.9 million on company acquisitions. So you could say that the cash on hand actually increased by about eight point seven million dollars so that's their uh, cash flow uh so this company i think might have reached a very important inflection point now you will have to pay for it because rpm global has a uh, markup 350 million 371.8 million but let's have a look at the chart um and you look at the daily chart first so probably the only reason why I decided not to take position is just because when you look at the daily chart, there was this period back in between about September of last year through to February where the share price was higher. If we didn't have this period, I would be probably more keen because it will be a little bit of resistance. And I think we have seen that resistance in the last few days and possibly even today um, because there was a little bit of selling the last few days. So if you look at the one hourly chart, we can see that selling. And see a little bit of selling when the share price got to between $1.65 and $1.70. And we have seen the share price go down a bit. Now, I think possibly, uh, I might even put a sneaky bid in about $1.55. Uh, and hopefully they will see a rebound. But when you look at the daily one hourly chart, this that looks way more bullish. But I am concerned about, if I just zoom out a little bit more, uh, share price was at these levels back in February. So there will be resistance. Those shareholders who bought back then will want to sell out of this dog stock really good volume as well that's the other thing the other thing i was thinking about and when i saw this announcement and one of the reasons why i don't like this sort of trading is you do have to keep your eye on during the day so i have been keeping my eye on for short periods of time during the trading day and there was an opportunity to buy this company uh, late on tuesday when the share price did pull back a little bit to one dollar and fifty cents and the reason why one dollar fifty cents in that level was pretty strong you just see here that was a pretty good uh, support level for this company. Was resistance became support. Uh, I don't think the share price is going to get back to dollar fifty. Uh, and if it actually did, I, that would be fairly bull bearish. So I think dollar fifty five, dollar maybe dollar sixty, somewhere in that zone. I might even think about taking a position. Share price closed at dollar sixty one five. Anyway, uh, next company I'll look at is Katmandu or KMD Brands. It's really interesting. So this was a negative announcement, uh, a brand's trading update. Uh, they released fairly positive uh, financial results back in May, and all of a sudden things have turned negative. So it sounded pretty good initially, then on track to deliver record sales, despite softening consumer sentiment. I think there's one line here. Uh, if I can find it. Oh, here it is. Katmandu has so far experienced a slower start to its winter trading period cycling its best best ever winter season performance last year. Sales and retail footfall have been, been impacted by a warmer start to winter. I've heard a lot of people complaining about how cold it is, and that's just mornings. It has actually been unusually warm uh, in Brisbane. We had a one unusual warm week. So don't look at the minimum temperatures. It's the maximum temperatures you have to be focused on. 
minimum temperatures are a function of cloud cover, moisture, and wind. Nothing to do with climate change, nothing to do with global warming, that sort of thing. Those are three things you have to look for uh, in terms of minimum temperature. And because we are moving into El Nino, we're seeing less less moisture in the atmosphere. So we get these colder and colder mornings. That's why it has seemed like this uh, winter has been a little bit colder than usual in the mornings, but uh, the warms have been warming up. So unusually warm. And that's uh, worldwide. I've also saw someone say, well, in my place, it wasn't that warm. Well, that's you. I mean, you're not the whole world. I really hate when people think they're the whole world. If it's cold at my place, it must be cold everywhere. It's not the way it works. Anyway, a ramble finish. So KMD Brands, I've already mentioned they had a really good, really good, uh, what do you call it, uh, the results in May. And here it is. You can just see this on the, let's look at here. this is the one hourly chart. So on the 18th of May, share price, when they released their results, was up 2.9%. Went to a high of $1.08 uh, two days later. This looked like it was a breakout. So the share price of this company was trading in this range. It looked like a possible breakout. Uh, that breakout didn't last because then the selling came in. And look at that share price, just plummeted. Soon as the, it was confirmed false breakout, share price went from the top of the range all the way to the bottom of the range in about, about a month. Kept on selling. Share price bounced off the bottom of the range. Technical analysis works, I tell you. Look, it bounced perfectly off the bottom of the range, and then the company released this negative trading update. Share price fell below the bottom of the range, and that is a break of the bottom of the range. So unfortunately for KMD brands, with daily chart, you can see it perfectly there. Trading in a range. Now it's fallen below the range on pretty big volume. So I would put KMD brands on my do not buy list right now. Integrated Research. This is another company I own. And for full disclosure purposes, I took another or added to my position uh, because of their announcement. So the markup of this company is really low. Um, this was a trading update. Positive trading update. Nothing else you can say about this update from. So they're comparing their guidance for financial year 23 to financial year 22. So everything's up apart from pro forma revenue. EBITDA 10 to 13 million. Cash at bank increased from 12.3 million to 18.6 million. Now we don't know changes in working capital, which will have effect on that. But this company is cheap, in my opinion, at these levels. So I don't know for why I'm doing this for. So Integrated Research has a market cap about 80 million. Uh, and don't forget this company has cash on hand. What was it? 18.6. They have no debt. I'm assuming you have no debt. So they have uh, an enterprise value of about 60 million for a company with EBITDA between 10 and 13. And it could be significantly higher that over the next few years because uh, I think they have sold some of the headwinds this company has faced. So this company has been a downtrend for a long time. Just look at that. Just look at that. Awful chart. Share price as high as $5 back in 2020 and now all the way down to 46 And that's why I took a small position in this company when I thought it was really good value. I'm just waiting to add to my position. And this was the announcement to add to my position. We did see a fair bit of volume coming in. Now, I was tracking the trading of this company the last few days, and there was a fund manager selling out of this company. The reason I know that is quite often we saw some pretty big dumps and when I say dumps, just selling on market, at a, I'm going to see if there's any any of that today. Uh, you can't really say that was a dump. That was open. So right here, 10.21 and 52 seconds, there was another dump. So we had a fair few shares traded, which sent the share price down from 47 cents all the way down, you know, 46 and a half cents. And then there was another dump. Uh, so we do have seen a fund manager selling some shares and that's why the share price has struggled to go even higher than it has been. So even if you look at the one hourly chart, share price has broken above a bit of a resistance level, which was a, one reason why I took a position. The share price has really struggled the last few trading days. And another way, way you can see that it was a fund manager dumping is just with these volumes. So you can see these peaks in volume um, when the share price has decreased. And that is that fund manager dumping. I think they have stopped their dumping. They have sold their shares because we have didn't see any dumping in the last, in fact, the last dump we did see 
Yeah, the, the, in that first hour, the first hour I showed you, no dumping for the rest of Friday. And that's where the share price was able to rally. So with that dumping, the share price went all the way down to 44 and a half cents. Share price rallied back up to 46 and a half cents. So as soon as the dumping finishes, that is uh, one, one reason why the share price just struggles to rally. So that is supply. I think maybe with this uh, less supply and more demand, we might see the share price rally from here. Just might. Uh, but I'd like to see what happens on Monday. But this was a good announcement from the company. Share price, just looking at the one hour chart, it looks beautiful. Daily chart, less beautiful, simply because the share price went through this little, you know, sort of between November and March, went through this possible turning around phase in sentiment that was failed. And the time to buy this company was when the share price got to um, sort of this level here. Just zoom in. So around about 33 cents, there was a double bottom there. That was the time to buy this company. Integrated research. Go integrated research. Okay. St. Barbara. Funny enough, I went through... I went through Comsec just to see... Because some of these, I forgot what announcements they did release. And St. Barbara... Uh, no announcements here. I was like, I'm sure they released an announcement because I put the initials down here or do go. So then I went to SBM market index. And yes, on the 12th of July, they released an announcement production update on strong quarter four, June financial year 23. So this seemed like it was a really positive announcement from St. Baba. Yes, it was from this company, 12th of July, 2023. It looked really, really good. Really, really good. But there was this was the 12th of July, but there was no reaction from the market. Share price up 1.9%. So not even sure I should have shown you this, but I just found it really interesting that in Comsec, the announcement wasn't there. It just disappeared. It just shows you, even though Comsec for some people is the go-to for all the investing needs, it sometimes falls short. Anyway, if we look at the daily chart for St. Barbara, this is in a downtrend. And I've already mentioned for one company, I forget who it was, Bell Financial Group. 150 day moving average is the resistance level for that for that company. And it seems like for St. Barbara, it's another resistance level. Look at that. In fact, all the way back, all the way back to 2020. So if the share price gets above that 100, 150 day moving average, it only stays above it for a very short period of time. And we do see selling coming in. Um, last time it got to that level was in May. And I think you have to ignore this day on the 6th of July when the share price was down 48%. That was a capital return. I could be completely mistaken. And if you look at the day, uh, one hour chart, yeah, because that capital return, now, whoops, my, that capital return, uh, in trading view, you can adjust it. No, you can't. You can adjust it for dividends in TradingView. Or maybe they don't consider, TradingView doesn't consider this as a dividend, maybe just a capital return. Anyway, that's why there was a big drop in share price. It has fooled some people. I saw some Facebook groups that was like, what happened with St. Barbara? Share price dropped 50%. It must have been some really negative news on the 6th of July. There was no news on that day. And when I say no news, look, there's no news, 6th of July. Yeah, anyway, so uh mob mob this is a long video moblecom why do i want to talk about this company the share price of this company on the 11th of july rose 162.5 percent and then dropped 23.8 18.8 why did it rise 162.5 percent in one day share price went from eight no 0.8 cents to 2.1 cents so whenever i see share price rise like that first thing i do is go to the announcements there was no announcements. In fact, well, the 10th of July, there was an announcement, but that was the 10th of July when the share price did nothing. And there was 286 shares traded on that day. And that announcement was released 9.31 a.m. So that was before 286. For some reason, there was a lot of excitement in this company on the 11th of July. Went from 286 shares traded to 96.2 million. So more than likely, this is just day traders. 
So this uh, company received a price query from the ASX, price and volume query in real effect, because uh, the ASX looks at prices and volume. And they just want to know, has the company released, has the company not released any relevant information that could explain their share price rise? Uh, and if not, has there, or is there any other explanation? And they said no. Well, they did say, the third point, is there any other reason why share price might have risen like this? And they actually mentioned the announcement on the 10th of July. And they said here, this actually, I do remember this now. They said, so there was no reaction from the ASX, 286 shares. But Mobilecom is uh, listed also on the um, NASDAQ. And they say here, it is noted that the content of the announcement released on NASDAQ was the same as that released on the ASX. And there was significant trading in the company securities on NASDAQ. So let's have a look at the NASDAQ. Mobilecom, NASDAQ. So on that day, the share price rose 88% and then it's just fallen off. So that's why there was really high volume and a lot of shares traded because NASDAQ for some reason got excited. Who knows why? And if we look at the one hourly chart, that's NASDAQ though. I don't want to look at NASDAQ. Mobilecom, share price rose 362.5% in one hour. In one hour. And then two hours later, share price dropped 38.9% and just kept on dropping. And the share price has dropped all the way down to 1.4 cents. Share price got as high as 4.5 cents. This is just day traders becoming silly. And I'd say most day traders, unless you bought it right in open, right on open, a lot of day traders probably lost a lot of their money. Anyway, so it's really interesting. CNW, Cirrus, a company I've held in the past. This is one of those services companies that uh, has a lot of revenue, but very little margins, low margins, and not a lot of profit. And they released an announcement on the 13th of July, Cirrus NVIDIA collaboration. Now, this was not marked as sensitive. So even though it's got the word NVIDIA in there, and you know our investors are going to go nuts if they see the word NVIDIA, it should be marked as price sensitive. So I don't like these sort of announcements, by the way, because if you're doing or getting into a partnership with NVIDIA or a company like that, you don't have the power. They have all the power and more than likely you are going to be screwed. Uh, so collaboration with leading accelerated computing and AI company NVIDIA, uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Cirrus launch events with NVIDIA planned in Perth and Canberra. The market did get excited. Then the company went into a trading halt later in the day. And the reason for the trading halt was they needed some clarification in regards to the announcement. So da -da 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 -da, here we are. Pending clarification on today's announcement. I have seen this a few times in the past. And when a company has to clarify, it's not usually good. In fact, I have seen once before, I totally forget which company it is. I think the company went bankrupt. They announced a partnership with this big company. And apparently that company didn't want the partnership to be announced. So they um, stopped the, the partnership going forward. And that company went bankrupt because of it, because they were a little bit too hasty in sending out the announcement. Uh, maybe this is what this is, but who knows? Anyway, the market did get excited with Cirrus. So this is one hourly, share price rose 23%. Really pretty good volume as well. Share price have been rising for a few days beforehand too. Share price went all the way up to a high of 5.9 cents and came back to 4.6 cents. So fair bit of selling during the day as well. Now I've already mentioned this company has really low margins. Now they did do a trading update on the 6th of July, which I don't think I covered because yeah, low margins. So it looks like their revenue is going to be like $112 million. So you think a company has revenue $112 million. They should have a pretty good uh, profit. Their profit's going to be really low. And when I say low, I'm uh, probably two or $3 million. That's what I'm thinking. They do say the cash from operations of 5.4 billion, but that's operations in taking into account activity, um, financing, What's the other one? Cash from financing activities, cash from investing activities, uh, cash flow, free cash flow would be like two or three million at best. So again, $112 million of revenue, very low profits because of low margins. This is a service company, um, IT service company. 
So that serious uh, innovative managed services and IT solutions provider. I think this is one of the companies which always updated the amount of staff they have. Oh, look, we've increased our staff by 30 people. Wow, aren't we great? I was thinking, whenever I read that, I was thinking, yeah, but you're going to have to pay these people. Um, anyway, Cirrus. ME1, Melodial Global Health. So share price is less than one cent, 0.9 cents. Record revenue quarter with group sales up 105%. Uh, so what does the company do? No idea. Brings the best of all cannabis company. Best of cannabis and other plant-based products to better lives of people and animals. So more than likely, the market cap of this company is really, really low. So 17.5 million. Let's have a look at the announcement again. What's that smoke on? Funny enough, on the 10th of July, they released another announcement. Manova delivers record half yearly revenues was not market sensitive. Anyway, I don't know what Mandova is, Mandova, whatever it is. Unordered net sales of 4.74 million, so low base. Uh, half First half, county year 23, sales up to 7.1 million. Not sure why the net sales for the first half. I'm going to have to read this a little bit more. So it's talking about sales. That's all they're talking about. Uh, no profit, no cash flow. So again, I don't like those sort of announcements either. Uh, I would assume the market did like it. Up 53.9%. Pretty big volume as well, 193.2 million. So let's have a look at the chart. Uh, I would assume this share price of this company has been in the downtrend for a while. Look at the daily chart first. Remember, the yep, downtrend. Really high volume coming in though. That's a good sign. Increasing volume over the past eight to nine months. You can see we started to see volume increase late last year. Before that, really low volume. Volume started to increase, but look at that downtrend. So we need to see signs this downtrend is coming to end. This uh, up 53% was not the end of the downtrend. It's still in a downtrend. But if we look at the one hourly chart, for some reason, it's not... Not sure what it's doing. Oh, for some reason, it's not working the one hourly chart. Anyway, that's all I'm going to do with uh, ME1, which is called Melodial Global. I wonder if this company's changed their name. I've never heard this company before. I'm thinking they changed their name. So let's have a look at if this company has changed their name. Formerly Creso Pharma, that's why. Oh, so many companies just changed it. Stop changing your name. I know Creso Pharma, yeah. Uh, stop changing your name. Jeez, there's no reason. Creso Pharma to Melodial Global. Uh, oh, Alliance. This is um another instance where I was thinking of taking a position at the start of trading today. Man, I should have, because share price up 6.9%. Coulda, shoulda, woulda. After being up 13.1% yesterday, the reason the share price has rallied, they released a profit guidance. So just because the share price has rallied, we already know the market liked it. Uh, so these are pretty good results from the company. I'm not going to go into it at all. Earnings guidance. So this is a profit upgrade. Now expected to be 56.9. Previous guidance was between 50 and 55 million. So I love profit upgrades. This was a classic profit upgrade. The reason I love profit upgrades is because the market loves profit upgrades. And why shouldn't they? And this is a beautiful looking chart. Well, actually, that's a one hourly chart. Two big up days in a row. And one of the reasons why I was hesitating about taking a position on open this morning was just the resistance because the share price has been in a downtrend. But if you look, and this is why I'm sometimes looking at the one hourly chart. So yesterday we saw the share price up big on the first hour. And then it went sideways in the next five hours. Then up big on open this morning and share price has gone sideways ever since. So on open, we've seen a big rally in the share price for this company. Uh, so then it's good, really strong to see the share price go sideways. So it means there's no selling. Uh, if we look at the volume, probably would prefer a little bit higher volume, but better volume than what we've been seeing. So this could be the shift in sentiment for this company. But again, if we just zoom out a little bit, the last time the share price was this high was not that long ago, April 
and it looks like the company released some negative news in April. So getting back up to where the share price was back just in April. So um, and not a high quality company either. Another a non high quality company is Damstra. This company share price has fallen off a cliff. You can see up twenty two point seven percent. Um, they actually released. So I wasn't gonna. They released two announcements this week: 11, 12, 13, 40. Monday and then Friday. Uh, so Damstra generates free cash flow in quarter four, financial year twenty three, and then Damstra signs agreements with two mining clients. Now, share price up twenty three percent when this mining or this contract was for $375,000 of annual recurring revenue. That does not a lot. And the other one was it generates free cash flow. Now, their definition of free cash flow might be different than my definition. So let's have a look. Uh, generate free cash flow of 500000 They don't really mention how they how they calculate free cash flow. We ought to see when the company releases their Appendix 4C soonish. But... The most important thing when it comes to Damstra is how the market has responded. Look at the daily chart first. So this looks pretty good, much better. But again, this looked really good back in July last year. Share price rallied from about seven and a half cents all the way up to 25 cents in a fairly short period of time. But I don't think that was a sustained rally. Not a high volume either. We're not seeing really high volume right now, but share price has rallied from 6.2 cents to a current share price of 13 and a half cents. So share price has more than doubled in a fairly short period of time. If we look at the one hourly chart, yeah, share price has moved into a very short-term uptrend, um, but I won't be playing Damstra just because I want more, I need a little bit more proof the company has turned the corner. Market cap of this company is probably about 30 to 35 million now. It's 30 here, 35 million. Uh, so it's been as low as seven and a half minutes. So this company, for those who don't know, let's have a look at the weekly chart for this company. This company was a bit of a cult stock on the ASX back in 2020. Share price got to a high of $2.40. Uh, and you can just see what happened. And uh, they were free cash flow positive back in 2020, 2021. There was a few quarters that were free cash flow positive, but they have not maintained it. Okay, the last company, and this has been a long video. Last company I want to talk about is, I have no idea what this company is, One Click Group. I would assume this company has changed the name recently. I have never heard of this company. And to be honest with you, I have heard most of the companies. One Click Group, this is from Market Index. The reason I like Market Index is because in a snapshot, they have the company's name and then they'll put in brackets, if the company has changed the name, what the previous name of the company was. So if I've never heard of a company before, I just go to Market Index and do what I've done with one click group. And this company was formerly known as UUV Aquabotics. And I do know that company, not really well, but I have heard of that company. So this is another company that has changed their name. When did they change the name? Just look at, if we go to July last year, they were named as Aquabotics. So November, so they changed the name late last year, so about a year ago. But to be fair, I was not following Aquabotics all that closely. So why am I talking about Aquabotics? No, what are they called again? One click group in today's video. Well, share price did increase 77.8%. That's why 77.8%. And the reason why the share price increased 77.8% was because substantial revenue growth as users surpassed 90,000. I don't even know what this company does. What's What are the users? I think this is a company. Okay, about one click group. Fast-growing Australian-based financial technology platform positioned to disrupt and capitalize on the increasing market demand for online self-directed financial and life administration services, uh, online tax. Sort of sounds interesting. The one-click platform aims to be the one-stop shop for everyday Australians who want to manage their financial life administration across tax, wills, insurance. More. This actually sounds interesting. A digital one-click verify is a digital identity identity verification platform allowing businesses to digitally identify. I'm going to put this down. I'm going to do a bit of research on this company. Oh, yeah. So they increased their 
user base or something. Rich and I revenue is surpassing one million, so one million dollars in revenue per month. Year to date revenue of one point seven million. So July revenue is one million. Oh, year to date, I okay, get one point seven. So that's two months of revenue. I was going to say they had more revenue in July than almost the whole year. Uh, now exceeding the entire prior year, full year revenue of 1.6. So they're growing. So here it is. They're nicely growing. Revenue has gone from 300,000 to 1, 1 million. That's July, not a quarter. Hopefully they release an appendix for CES. I, without doubt they will because they released one. Let's have a look at the one year. Let's have a look at the March quarter, Penix 4C. Just see, I just want to see how much cash they're burning through. $156,000 in receipts. No wonder I have not looked at this company, that sort of receipts, burning through cash. So $1 million of revenue in the month. This is a quarter. So maybe there's a lot of seasonality around this company. So I'm going to be really looking forward to their quality results. So share price increased from 0.9 cents to 1.6 cents. So let's have a look at the chart. Last thing we're going to do in today's video. We'll look at the daily chart first. Ooh, that weekly chart looks terrible. So that was Aquavonics, whatever it's called, UUV Aquavonics. Uh, daily chart looks ugly. So let's have a look at the weekly daily chart. Yeah, so last night share price was this high, was back in October last year. So maybe this is a breakout for Aquaponics. One click group, sorry. Go one click group, doing really, really well. Okay, so I'll put that down, that company down as for me to do a little bit more research. Anyway, uh, that's it for this video. So don't forget, I am not a financial advisor. If you do need financial advice, make sure you seek out someone who is qualified and can speak to your own financial needs. If you found any company you want to do any more research on, uh, feel free to do that because you're the own boss. I'm not the boss of you. So hopefully you have found a company you have liked the sound of, um, or maybe you've heard this company before, like one click group, and I've given you the incentive to do further research on. So have a good weekend. And that's it for today's video. Or if you're watching this after the weekend is finished, have a good week. So that's all for this video. Have a good day. Bye.